away from to stop sipping. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Gringos Liberados. This is episode four for Split 2 2024. My name is Trajan. I'm joined by Soph Chan and RMC on this episode. And we just got done dealing with the upheaval of the entire ecosystem when we got hit this morning with another one for tier two. So we're going to get into that. We're going to get into America's challenges. We're going to talk about some CBLOL. And we have uh, uh, quite a few questions actually to answer the community as well. So we've got quite a lot to run through in this episode. So we're going to keep it nice and productive and efficient. It's only going to take three and a half hours. So stick around, guys. And it's it's all going to be good. Well, so we're going to try two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. Uh, let's do CBL first. This is unusually, this is the thing that we are more comfortable with, that we feel we understand better, <laughs> is the actual CBL games. Uh, because we have, we, we've developed a fairly organized league by the third week, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. You know, we've got one team in first. Would anyone have guessed that it would be them? No, but no. <laughs> still, <laughs> we have a clear best team. And that team is Fluxu. How do we feel about the best team being Fluxu? So, Chan, how do you feel about the the, the old eighth to first swing around for Fluxu now that we're here into Split 2? I think this is all about the ascension of the protagonist, the hero, you know, getting Don't. from the humbled at the bottom of Don't the standings into first place. Yes, I, I, yeah. I have. You know what? It. Yeah, trigo has been amazing. I agree. No, man, I can't take it. I can't. He, he's going to come for me. I've been talking too much <laughs> trash on Trigo for so many years yeah. now. You know, I've I've been around long enough that I can finally say years when it comes to CBL viewership. Just enough time to get years of Trigo hate on the books, and now he's first. And I look. Like I, I was trolling when I chump. said that. So, are you actually gonna go Trigo? No, no, absolutely okay. not. No, we're talking about Shinny here for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 crack Shinny, man. The guy is. Yep. <laughs> is we were talking last week about Absolutely. like maybe this guy's the MVP and like I don't know he's in first cleanly in first and that stat that we saw that we went out on on Twitter with that Fluxu has gotten every oh, yeah. herald and every yeah. baron in all of their games. I don't know, it's man. Huge. That's jungle so diff. Huge. That's jungle diff. Yeah, right it, there. It's such jungle diff. It's rotation diff, meta diff, macro diff. Everything in regards to how Shinny is conducting the games. God, it's just making this team look like a complete different unit. And I, I really like that for them because it gets a little boring when you're just expecting a oh, pain, loud, red, but top standings. Yay, <laughs> fun. You yeah. know, I like the switch around. I appreciate mm -hmm. that VKS is also the one coming in second place here right now with the cu yeah. current standings. And it, yeah, it's easy just after, just tied with loud pain. But to me, all of this so far enabled by new players, sometimes rookies with INTZ, that just make this feel such refreshed in regards to CB Love right now that I, I just really like it. Yeah, I agree. And it's interesting too, because the only changes they made were Shinny and Trigo. And I mean, we were joking about Trigo because Trigo, uh, we didn't have necessarily high hopes for him, though I do think mm -hmm. Meta right now is actually playing a huge part in Fluxu's success. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically Trigo's champion pool and what we're seeing, the fact that Jin is m allowable in the meta. Like, I don't yeah. want to say it's meta. It's playable. For yeah, sure. and I think that's massive for Trigo. Uh, things like Ash, Jin, supportive AD carries have always mm -hmm. been some of his best. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you, he's still got the hyper carries like we saw on the Jinx uh, this week as well. You know, that that is those are champions that we knew Trigo for uh, in the past, you know, back when he was on Renska, even on Pain, yeah, he'd just be the team fight champion. So things like Callista Lucian, that was what we didn't know Trigo for. Uh, but that meta feels like it's kind of over. So yeah. it's perfect for Trigo. And Shinny unlocking Kiari, I think, has been huge. Kiari's been floating around CB Law for a while. We've already said he's good. Other top laners have said he's good. But Shinny really feels like he's unlocking Trigo, uh, unlocking Kiari, pardon me, to never before seen levels. Mm hmm. And I really like it because I think that one is not meta dependent. Like Kiari Shinny, that duo, yeah, that's just mm -hmm. magic, and that good. won't change throughout the split. Because mm -hmm. it, it so often felt like Kiari is on his own, trying his best to you know yeah. winning lane more often than he probably should be. He's always had like a nice, interesting pool that you can take to team fights as well. But the teams have just been like some degree of on fire around him, 
And I think that was starting to affect him personally a little bit. I think like his play did suffer somewhat over the last couple of splits, but he came back in like he hadn't missed a beat. And yeah, now he's got, you know, Mm -hmm. I think pretty conclusively the best performing jungler in the league, that's for sure, right now, over these first six games. And he is, he's still winning lanes. Like he still has a really flexible pool that no one else is like stretching as far as the cannon. He's the only one doing this pick right now. And he's like making good use of it, you know? And it's it's just something has just been unlocked for him that has allowed him to be himself. Um, and it fits really well into a strong team. We can now say that Kiari, you know, you know, when we would say potentially in the past, or oh, if you put him on a good team, then he'd be able to shine. Well, he's on a good team now, and he is shining. Like maybe that was true the whole time that he just needed yeah. a better <laughs> squad. I think part of it too it also goes back to Trigo, because the last time we saw Kiari find success was on that Renska squad with Trigo. Yeah. When you can kind of leave Trigo on an island, right? And like Trigo doesn't demand resources, don't give it to him. Give yeah. it to Kiari, right? Like when he was on a roster, uh, even when he was playing with like Juliera, Juliera didn't have a great split uh, with Matsukaze as well on that Liberty squad. Mm-hmm. But they still sent resources to the bot lane. Whereas we're literally seeing Trigo being ignored right now on this roster. And it's working. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess it's just the way you need to play with Kiari on your roster. Yeah. Like, you. It's. Because Trigo, like. You just need to keep him out of the hands check scenarios. Like, don't put him, don't put him on that pedestal. Don't ask him to do that, especially against the particular opponents that we have at the top level of the CB lol. And things like Varus Lethality, Jinx as well. It's attack speed based ultimately for DPS, but it's like a protect the president champion. Like you need to protect Jinx to get that Mm -hmm. first kill, and then the passive makes it so anybody could crush a team fight with a champ. It doesn't matter. Like, once you've gotten excited, it's not hard to win yeah. with, with with Jinx. So, like, you just need to keep him safe and activate him and play around him and let him get that advantage. And he's a very reliable player. Now, a lot of the yeah. ultimate, like, CB LOL clutch moments come down to players hand-checking and clutching it out and making a stupid, crazy engage or catching a really massive throw, or doing like a really big 2v2 outplay early on and snowballing that. And Trigo's not going to be that guy, but if you have a team that can guard against that happening, which is what Fluxu has particularly very successfully been doing, then he's great. And he fits really well into that formula. You know, you don't have to be a hands checker to win CBL. I believe this in my heart of hearts. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want this to be true. I don't think it's actually happened in a long time, but I do believe this to be the case. So Yeah, I agree. I, I believe that too. You know, I believe yeah. that for five straight splits and it And you know, pop, one pop, we're pop we're gonna get there. <laughs> Obviously, we're gonna get it there. Will. It um, will. <laughs> if it, if it's Trigo that I'm gets us like... there, I will be shocked, but you I'm know lose my mind. maybe that will have been the actual <laughs> Who knows? truest timeline of all, you know. Maybe, maybe. I think Imagine we also the- need to give a lot of credit to Scamba. Like, I think it's Scamba yes. with Shinny and the shock calling has mm-hmm. been so, so, so good mm-hmm. in gauges. And for these types of protect the president with the jinx going from just getting such a steady front line and allowing for Trigo just to be one rocket launcher, I get one assist, I go excited. Mm-hmm. It's all good. You know, you don't need to be super close because you got range on the jinx. With the other compositions, we saw that going on with the Jin plus Rel, also so good for setups. And again, you're also incredibly far away from the fight anyway, because your Jin, you're just going to be getting your curtain call from a thousand miles away. And your squad, as usually for the these team fights, like Shinny and Scamba together, have been getting just insane quality out of every engage and every pickoff, which I think is Again, what allows for the team to say, yes, we can do resources for Kiari, we can do resources for Fu, we can even have the resources on Shinny that is going to translate to self in regards to mid to late game. So I, I feel like they have discovered the magic, you said, RMC, with this specific roster. It's, it's just, mm-hmm. it's working. I love it. Scamber is like, he's like every AD carries dream support. He will play tank engage or brom, no matter what you want him to do. Mechanics, there's no question. He'll make the right mechanical play every time. He'll make great judgments every time in terms of when to pick his engage. He will follow the calls. He will not try and take the game into his own hands. He's not going to try and run it down at uh, two minutes into his own lane and throw your lane for you. He will be right by your side when you need him by your side. And he will be 
locking out the enemy AD carry when he needs to lock out the enemy carry. And he's not trying to lead the game. He's just doing exactly what the team needs him to be doing and what, like, every AD carry wants him to be doing. Like, he's like, I need to protect you. I need to set you up for kills. And I will do it in the exact perfect way every time. That is... That's what Scammer's doing for me, man. And he's got, like, a great leader coming out of the jungle and, like, good veterancy experience from Kiari as well. And Trigo, to be fair, as well. He has many splits under his belt. He doesn't have to be an in-game leader like Jojo or whatever, but he's just doing exactly what is needed, bro. He's like, I am the support support. <laughs> you know, Jojo, you say that, and the moment you said that, it, it came to mind that Scamber was not a particular AD carry's first choice. No. Scamber used to be on red cannons. Yep. Titan didn't want Scamper. He wanted want Curry yeah. on that same roster. Mm. Now, can you imagine Fluxu plays against Pain in the Grand Finals and beats him? And then not only does Scamper get revenge on Titan, yeah. saying that, hey, you didn't want me. Yeah. We already complained about B Boy was the problem, guys. Trigo yeah. got kicked out of that yeah. roster. The original <laughs> AD was, was the problem. <laughs> it was Trigo. <laughs> That'd be the dankest oh, pain timeline ever. Oh, <laughs> For Pain uh, to like beat loud. Mm but then lose anyway. Like, beat loud, but still don't win the title. Imagine the scenes. Uh, Bro. Uh, I was actually going to say, since we're talking about supports here, to me, the dream support on CB Law at the moment, and since the last split, I wouldn't say the last split, but since we saw him at the end of last year, so second split 2023, mm. to me, has been Pro Delta. Oh and my god. Go into VKS yeah. just right now. Yeah. And I think he's improved so much. Of course, like he was still rookie. He got rookie of the year last year. We talked about how much it could mean to, to him to be changing into VKS from pain. But now in this split in particular, especially after they got the first seed in regular season in the first split, it mm -hmm. just feels like he's much more comfortable to make these calls sometimes himself and what you said Trajan like if you need him by your side he's by your side if you wouldn't if you need him engaging he's engaging if you need him peeling he's peeling I feel like Prodelta really is the support for mm. me and I've been a Prodelta stand for a while yeah. and I yep. will not back off this he road <laughs> understands his role right, very yeah. well as well Rods is great. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that one hurt. when they And he, he has a similar task, right? Goes. He's protecting yeah. Smiley in yeah. the same way. Like, Smiley is also someone that you probably don't want to throw into the 1v1 hands check. You want to have a support and maybe a jungler, maybe someone else behind him. Get him that first kill. <laughs> get him, like, let him set up with the Ashel or get him the, the Jinx passive. And then he will, you know, then you can let him go. So it's a, it's a very similar role, I think, that Prudenza has to fulfill. And he also does it very, very well. While also having a little bit of extra spice in the pool that he's shown us and... We haven't seen quite as much depth from Scamber yet, but I'm, you know, I don't have any doubt that he'd be able to do that because we, as we say, the mechanics are very much not the issue there. So if they need him to pick up Lulu, if they need him to pick up uh, Nico, like I'm, I'm sure that's that's doable for them. So yeah, very, very, very happy with both of them for sure. Supports are. I'm glad that we have these new supports coming in because so far, it was a while where there wasn't that much excitement there. There was just kind of chaos at the top. And Zai came in and then didn't end up panning out ultimately. Like, there was a lot of hype there and there were good moments, but ultimately it's not stuck around. But now we have Pro Delta, Scamber, which I don't think anyone really expected to be as impactful as he has. Um, so that is nice to see to see more more bulking up uh, into that support position, which is just so often overlooked in a, in a region which is all fighting all the time. You know, it's, it's easier to just get hung up on the carries. Um, so VKS did lose that game to Fluxu. Every, mm -hmm. I say everyone. I, and I think a lot of people, were like, you know, Fluxu is VKS light. They're both macro heavy teams, but VKS has the star power, has the name power over them. You know, they're just going to be a better version of Fluxu on the day. And it just was the opposite. It was just the opposite happened. And CL basically came out and said, like, yeah, we biffed that one. Like, we made bad choices. We took bad fights. We, I think, headbutted a brick wall or something or other was mm -hmm. the wording that yeah. he used. Um, they were just like, we just fought when we didn't have to fight. I'm watching back that game, you know, it seems pretty true. Um, so yep. they just made a bad decision as a team. And then Fluxu are right there to out, you know, maneuver them in the moment and then just push through for a win. So maybe a small stumble from VKS, but ultimately Fluxu have not made a stumble yet. So I guess, I guess VKS are <laughs> Fluxu light, I suppose, until we are see proven otherwise. Um, yeah, I would say so too. And actually, um, just a sneak peek here because 
we're going to be having on CB Law a couple of interviews exclusively coming mm. from players that we're going to be releasing soon in our social media. And one of them that we had this week was with Giger. And for this match in particular, of course, I'm not going to spoil too much. But he said, yeah, I don't think, for example, the lane swap was a mistake. I think he was still like a, a moment where he would choose mm -hmm. to do a lane swap. But yep. They didn't execute the rest of the game well, like yeah. as as you mentioned, Trajan yeah. about CL, like a couple of mistakes that were just really hitting a point where okay, just stop doing that, change your trajectory, change <laughs> what you want to do about this, and they didn't quite adapt as fast as they wanted to. So Giga was like, good on Fluxu for actually being mm -hmm. able to maintain yeah. not making as many mistakes or if any, and they're just learning quite a lot from this right now and he had mm -hmm. a couple of good interesting takes on lane swap in general too yeah yeah and i think it goes back to you know the veteran experience right the fact that shinny has been in more clutch situations and we have to keep in mind bks is still a very very young roster right the most experienced player on that roster at least in cb lol was kiko yeah and he was at 2021 20, uh somewhere around there 2020 2021 so he's a lot younger in a way mm -hmm. uh than shinny and Shinny's a jungler, right? He's used to having that macro view. He goes a top laner. He's on an island most of the time. And <laughs> most of the playing Orn down the and watching yeah. the skill feed to be like, well, I'm going to win this game. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, he's actually done it on the Orn. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, like in this sort of situation, yeah, it happens, right? We're still in first round Robin. Uh, I'm not too, too worried. Yeah, we can call Kate Stars Fuxu Light if we want for now. And then we'll, we'll have to see the second round Robin whether they punch back. And that to me will be more. Uh, informative i guess mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah we'll see if there are any major shifts that are going to affect it obviously we are going to you know the patch cycles are going to move on and we had like yep. a lot of i think generally people feel like the game is in a pretty good state right now i think it seems like it's in a pretty good yeah. state i think there's a decently wide variety of styles available across mm -hmm. many if not all of the roles so that seems I like a healthy one. Not that we are utilizing. utilizing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, like, not that we are utilizing all of that here in Brazil, no. for example. Like, I love the tank supports, but please, all of the other supports that are also doing well can be utilized yeah. too. Who, 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 did the, who did the Lulu game? Was it Jojo? Jojo. It Jojo. Jojo. And it was like yep. the most godlike Lulu game I've seen in years. It, and was, it was like amazing. A yeah. Massive impact. Every single play. He's like got like hands in every side of the play, fixing it with like a whimsy and a slow and a shield and an ult. And like, this is what Lulu can do. You know, we can pick this, yeah, guys. Was, we're, we're building, we're, we're drafting like Zeri and Jinx and stuff. Like, <laughs> let's get, Lulu exists. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone's playing Sedge. We don't need. Another one, okay? Everyone's playing Sidrani. You can play Tanks Top, you got yes. Skarna, whatever. Just pick Lulu, so. Hopefully, that will have stuck in someone's head getting absolutely dismantled by, by Lulu in that way. Um, and we know that we've got, like, Frosty and, and others that can do this, so. Um, let's look at the little echelon below our top two here. And there is does feel like there is a bit of a gap now, whereas before, there were three. Now there's two. INTZ had an mm -hmm. O2 week and did not look super great doing it. Um, they first lost to Kaboom, which everyone was just hitting the scary pipe pretty hard after that one, which I maintain was not justified. Uh, and I think we saw that borne out in their next game. But then they lost another one. Then INTC lost again. And we just didn't really see... So, so I guess I just posed this question to you guys. What do you think went wrong here did we just have like a couple of vks-esque we just mismanaged this game guys or is there something deeper to be worried about um for intz at this stage okay so i'll start with the second game because i think the second game is a better blueprint on how to beat intc and mm. some of the strengths that we've seen from them and in the second game that was the furia versus intz game where jojo picked lulu and what we have to remember mm. is damage is one of the premier engaged players engage support players in the region always has been even back when he was kind of inting and causing damage to his own team he was still doing it on engage supports all the way the owners back in meta damage is going to look great just pick lulu every time he went in on lane in lulu polymorph utterly useless got wiped it's kind of yeah. that mm -hmm. easy to dismantle the bot lane and if ninja kiwi goes down things get complicated for intc yes they're more multi-dimensional than they used to be it's not ninja kiwi or bust but without ninja kiwi things it is always tough. Now, the first game, I'm going to put this down to CB LOL, the broadcast. <laughs> they got Yampy to Pi Yups. I don't know why that morning. 
But I'm just saying, Yip's never recovered from that pie. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't take <laughs> okay. it. The, the brother on brother violence was well, just traumatizing. There you go. Yep. It, it, it's that of the scary pipe, your choice. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to hit the scary pipe. Everyone has been hitting it with abandon, and they need to put that down because it's not good for you, okay? <laughs> like, I, I'd like. Was anyone else super convinced by scary? Does anyone else think, am I the crazy one here? Or was scary just the same level of inconsistent, but he rolled a bunch of sixes on that day and. And they won, you know, with a Viari comp. Like, am I crazy? Is he actually better? Uh, okay. Here's the thing. I I'm biased because I also watched Academy. And the two days Scary wasn't there, Kaboom Academy lost. Including, oh, a, loss to a, <laughs> including a loss to INTZ Academy, which was on a 21-game loss streak over one and a half splits. <sighs> and Kaboom managed to break that without Scary. That's yeah, all I'm saying. So Kaboom took the win off the main team, but then lost the academy side and gave Ainz his either first academy win in 22 games. <laughs> yep. You know, we, we were joking in the I academy love the that there's a curse going on right now. I love now. it. Loud so... Academy is struggling incredibly hard. So we, we joke that the academy team has to suffer for the main team to find success. Yeah. So uh, the Liberty uh, in the reverse. Dies. Um... Yep, exactly. Liberty, <laughs> uh, they were winning uh, and until this week. They've lost. So maybe okay. Liberty actually picks up a win it's time. Know, uh, this coming yep. weekend. Yeah, you know, Pain Gaming can't win because Pain Gaming Academy won their side. So no matter what, Shoot. Pain Gaming can't take first. No. Yeah, lots of curses going on between <laughs> yeah. the Academy and Main Squad. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Soph? Do you, do you think do you think Scary is better than Maorang? Um, Are you hitting the pipe? Uh, mm, I, I, I don't know, man. It, it feels like there's a little bit... Mm, there's not enough time to say if there's more consistency or not, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from what we saw, it was a little bit of a pop-off, more individual kind of scenario, and I would need some more time to actually see it because I, I didn't dislike uh, Mal Rank. I, True. Yeah. I didn't dislike him. I really didn't. Yeah. And if maybe, as I think I've mentioned before, the fact that Scary, of course, being Brazilian, rounds out the team as all speaking in Portuguese helps. Yeah. But is that all going to be enough? Mm. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they played against loud. It wasn't. Mm, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. We're all talking about the team yeah. trying to get and, used to the fact that they're playing together. Scary got absolutely <laughs> stomped out by Croc in that game, to be clear. Croc was so far yeah. ahead of Scary in that game. It was... There was a which one was it again? Gap in the jungle. Is it fair though? Because it is up against Loud, right? And even worse, it's actually like up against Loud, where Croc is not playing something that he can end. You know what I mean? Like what well, once Croc starts playing Maokai or Sejuani, you know you're. Oh, then he's he's because... locked in. He's mm -hmm. leant forward in a chair. You know, it's like all right, all right, let's get the Maokai yeah, out. Yeah, and he, he literally get... can't int anymore. If he gets caught, it's not inting. He's Doesn't just matter. engaging for the team with the space. <laughs> yeah. you know, and he's drawing like... focus. He's buying space. I don't know why I'm leaning so hard on players today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, we are we are being a little mean today. It's because we were just like, you know, so high on Fluxu here. And VKS, our top two, we feel good about our top two because there's lots to feel sure. good about. And we're going to get maybe, down maybe. to Loud and Pain now, who did have 2 -oh weeks. So if we're going to get some positive energy here, we, you know, Croc, as we say, locked in in a big way and stomped out an Academy jungler who arrived in his game. And like <laughs> the rest of Loud looked pretty well put together. Um, so... I don't really have any notes for loud. I think like they're just they're they're still just their floor is high in terms of beating them. Like I still think there's obviously big flaws in the way they play the game, but like their floor is high. You have to be so tall to win the game, actually, like to get their nexus down against loud, and they're still showing that. Mm -hmm. But for pain, who we'd have less natural faith in, just because they're not on a four championship winning streak. They put two together. Are we actually are we, we happy about pain? Do we think that they're going to settle back into this top half? Because Furia right behind them. We'll get onto them in a second. Are are coming up strong, and you know, yeah. they're only one game up. I actually think what's interesting for both pain and loud for me this week is they had very clear sort of recoveries for loud. Root had an incredible standout week for me, and mm. they interviewed it. They gave him MVP of the week. They interviewed him, and Root just went, "I I don't even think I did that good." Yeah, and he. Like he dominated uh, mm. the both games. I mean, in lane against BRTT, it was like kind of even. Yeah. But once he got out of lane, like Root was just untouchable on that Varus. And Varus mm. is not even a champion who has uh, an easy time positioning. And in his yeah. uh, Zeri game, he was literally untouchable against mm. the two. Yeah, and again, so it's kind of hard against Ash too because as you get slowed, normally the AD carry becomes vulnerable because your mobility is not there. But Root positioned so well, he didn't 
I don't even think he got slowed in those fights. Like, Natuno couldn't even touch him with a mm. volley or a basic auto attack. So, yeah, Rude was just absolutely stunning. And I am actually, uh, well, the fact that he's that and it's not even his good form uh, is, of course, worrying, I think, for every other team. Yeah. Payne, to me, had a similar situation with Wiser. Uh, Titan's still the standout for me this week for mm-hmm. Payne Gaming, but Wiser actually looked like Wiser, for, again, for like the first time in 2024. Yeah. Wiser actually looked good. His twisted fate against Minx Darius, the signature Darius that Minx yeah. played last split that you know shocked all of us, got like pentakill. Uh Wiser bodied him. Like yeah. Minx didn't even get yeah. to play the game for a guy. And Wiser on the Skarner against FNB, the laning was also uh, pretty clean as well. Mm-hmm. He managed to kind of shut down. And for and I remember Wiser playing Skarner like early weeks, he was missing the impales. He was spot on the team fight. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, both these teams, I mean, had a big up a big upside this week and i think if they maintain this upside we get to see the usual top one two of loud mm-hmm. pain coming back in for the second half yeah we need to yeah, see if to... I, I... oh go go ahead so thank you um i was just gonna say i think i'm on the same page because it, the fact that root was completely untouchable and i agree i think he wasn't even hit by any of the ash auto attacks or volley or even the zenith yeah. blade alongside with the the leona right and it was a composition not just with that with the maokai with the, <laughs> with the scar yeah. that was facing against it's, it's insane how much yeah. root was playing so it feels a little bit more in shape of what we would expect of loud so cool but yeah. from pain i am really really on board with the like wiser deserving so much for this Mm -hmm. week because Mm -hmm. that tf spacing was just so satisfying to watch he would try to get it every time he would try to pull right the darius nope no range try no range because he was just spacing so well it's immaculate and i feel like Every time there was an opportunity to get the, the ultimate into another side of the map and actually make a difference, they were doing mm-hmm. so. Yeah, and with yeah. the, the Skana game in particular, you mentioned as well, like the Impales finally hitting and being in a good position to really block and be in a, a good front line and just separate somebody from the fight or bring them in into the fight was just really, really necessary to feel like the other pieces of pain were actually falling mm-hmm. into place again. Because yeah, Chita did really, really well. But I think it was all because of this just m- overall just synergy being mm. a little more cohesive. Yeah, dude, th- this is why you, you you can't just blind pick Darius in pro in like everywhere. <laughs> this is why you can't do it. And this is especially now that TF Top is still meta and playable. This is like an yep. unbelievably new horrendous matchup for top for top Darius, <laughs> and like. He was getting, like, Mix was getting promo Darius bans, and, like, we have TF top players. We have multiple TF top players. FFB can do it, Kiari can do it, Wiser can do it. And finally, Payne were like, fine, take your stupid melee champ with no dashes. Like, okay, <laughs> and we'll just take it's an fine. unreasonably horrendous lane counter to it, and we'll actually just play it well enough to show you why this is not allowed for you to do this. And, like, that's was just a clear message sent, I think, that I'm glad that Wiser was there yep. to send it because we can't be held hostage by top Darius, man, as a region. We well, can't... The problem was... Can't be allowed. Yeah, it's that. For, the, yeah. for the entire first split... Yeah, he was doing it. He held hostage. the whole yeah. lane hostage with, Dar- with Darius. Yep. And, like, that's not allowed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's... So... No, it shouldn't, shouldn't be. be. <laughs> yeah, and, like, that, that, that dive, the 2v1 dive with Makes and Drake here onto Wiser... That was that was embarrassing <laughs> for them. That was not good. It really was. And Wiser Dude. absolutely fried them up in that in that dive. Uh, and I was like, okay, thing. this is over. If they did that last week or the week before, I think it works. Yeah. Like I, I, Wiser was on form this week. Yeah. If, if he yeah, was playing the way he was like last week, they get yeah. it, and Makes is just mm-hmm. gonna keep fooling everybody and thinking Darius is you know God's gift to the go to. <laughs> yeah. <It's> just... Like. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I, I want to add as well. Oh, hmm. just just before we go on, um, because it also makes sense with talking about Fudia just in a little bit. I was hmm. going to talk about the fact that yes, TF top is still staple, but we saw a TF mid for oh, INTZ true. that we also did. has to be talked about. We did. It was the Fudia versus INTZ, so it was yeah, Dioge yeah. on the Twister Fade mid, and it was a win for Fudia. Yeah. INTZ yep. that was. On a four and one became four and two. 
Mm-hmm. This uh, weekend, I want to ask you guys, what did you guys mm. think about it? Because to me, it was horrendous. I think the composition was <laughs> terrible. I don't think I would have picked the Twisted Fate mid in any occasion for that composition. I, 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 I think like ahead, TF Drew. has a, a point and click stun, and they have like lots mm-hmm. of CC to set up. And like TF for me, I always just think of it as a champion where it's like if you're able to play with the champion as a team, you can just pick it into whatever and as long as you're not mm-hmm. going to get smashed in lane by a really bad matchup or something like just the power of being able to move around the map and have a point and click stun should in theory in my head work with any other four champions that synergize as a four man unit like you can just use the yeah. tf in a certain way now you know they're, they're picking it to try and flex it presumably right to get a bit of like yep. edge on the draft and they end up putting it in mid at the end and taking the renekton into the jacks fine probably it's probably a fine thing to do and like tf into Huey, they're just range they're just going to clear the wave right and that's kind of what they did but it so i don't hate the tf mid pick in theory because i just feel like it's one of these evergreen picks that by the, by the way the champion works you should always be able to do something with it now it didn't do anything in this game <laughs> it is oh two and oh it did nothing <laughs> so well yeah, so I, I actually thought Dilge played the TF well, um, and I can see why you pick mm-hmm. it into Huey specifically, uh, mm-hmm. because a lot of times like dissipates laning phase is a little bit weaker range, against ranged matchups, and you need like, an mm-hmm. item, at least the Kraken Slayer usually, to start uh, winning out the 1v1. Uh, but between you know Kraken Slayer, the movement speed, Ghost, and all that, we saw quite a few times where Dilge 1v1 to Tuts effectively, and would have actually won the 1v1 had it remained a 1v1. Mm. The problem, I think, for that particular pick, that particular game, was actually the rest of the draft and how it ended up playing out for the team. I think Fury did a great job containing the Twisted Fate damage, right? Picking mm-hmm. things like Jax that can punish that. Things like uh, Maokai who can kind of dodge out the gold card and look for that engage as well. Uh, having Zeri with the Lulu to kind of speed her up and be able to kite out the, the Twisted Fate. I think the, Fury did a great job trying to answer that. So for me personally, I'm fine with Twisted Fate mid. I'd like to see it again, preferably in better circumstances when your team's not just falling apart on you uh for that game i actually had it more on the bot lane i felt like ayu jojo to me was the biggest problem mm-hmm. and because of that it kind of like warped the entire game to the point where i, I actually <laughs> can't really tell if the twisted fate uh is an issue or not uh, into the mm-hmm. middle lane, especially into touch this way mm. i was surprised that That's he went valid. ad again because they're like full ad at that point i mean kaisa's like you know yeah, both yeah. she took that's the point like yeah. Ayu took so long to actually get into the third item to be building that extra bit of a, uh, ap yeah that there was I, no ap damage I, I don't know if <laughs> ap you know ap idea. twisted fate affects the game really like obviously like i say we, we didn't really get a chance to see if it mattered and like the yeah. ad is better at 1v1ing away probably like you're not gonna out 1v1 yeah. away as ap tf but like i don't feel like that is ever the point of the lane at least and like there were times mm-hmm. where Dio was pressuring onto tuts um, which is fair, but like I feel like that's Tuts's fault, honestly. I feel like as Huey, you shouldn't be like getting into a fist fight with anybody. Like your champion has so much range and options to get away with stuff. Like, um, unless you're trying to kill them and you're like poke them down, then you can run at them and get into a fist fight with them. But like, I don't know if that's well, ever that's like specifically the why choice. you run the, the Twisted Fate because with Destiny and Ghost, mm, uh, you can actually just... can't do anything in a longer lane. You can yeah. just run at them and they can't do anything. Yeah, about we you. literally yeah. can't get away from <laughs> yeah. you in a longer lane. So yeah, uh, so the idea is better for the that idea of it. Yeah, yeah, sure. And yeah, ultimately, I don't think it mattered to the outcome of this game. The fact that they went sure. AD or AP, I don't think uh-huh. it affected this game. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. it was just an interesting choice. Yeah. I think that they're springing the AD into mid, like. Do you think there is a universe for AP TF in mid, or is it just going to be ADTF until mm. like the items aren't as good? You know. Yeah, yeah I, I would that's say a better AD. question. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because I, I like, is there a world you can run AP? There's a world where you could run AD Heimerdinger. Uh, yeah. But is do I ever see that happen in CB? Well, probably not. Yeah. I, I don't think AP TF. <laughs> the, the problem with AP TF is right now is that there's a mage who does it better, right? Like for any situation you want that TF, yeah. you if you want global end. pressure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you want the sort of uh, burst messiah style engage, uh, I mean, I think, like, heck, I'd, I'd pick a LeBlanc over that if you want to do that. I yeah, think and AP starter, LeBlanc's back now and playable, so yeah, you could just do that and yeah, have better sure. lane pressure and like quicker, mm-hmm. like short rotation and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. 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 
Oh well, um, rip TF. But let's talk okay. about Furia though. Let's talk about <laughs> Furia because we're all reviewing this Furia game, mm-hmm. and I'm excited to talk about mm-hmm. Furia. Yeah, because Furia is kind of poggers right now. I think they had a. Did they put a two hour week together? Um, no, they did was it not. Uh, they they should have. They should. Oh, it's the red game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had they Ergon. Have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it drove me insane when they didn't play around ZZK, mm-hmm. who got such a like was such a monster in the team fights. Yeah. Uh, but they just kind of didn't play around it, and they kept trying to make things happen on their own, and then they just kept getting picked apart by Red. It's like mm-hmm. uh, we are trying to beast mode the beast mode team. We are yeah. trying to outhands the team that is happy to just brains off, heads empty, and just full on hands it. I was just like, why are we doing this? We are playing into Red's Mule House. <laughs> yeah. And th- they were getting such good picks and stuff, especially like some of the Urgot plays, some of the Urgot ults from max range into fog and stuff. Like they were yeah. just really good. They were really well executed. And like from that game over to the INTZ one, we saw like the effective channeling of the beast mode kind of individual style that they're still doing where they're trying to win all their lanes and they're like picking for my head, like matchups and champions that have higher skill expression that can more effectively exert dominance over their opponents, which is what they're often doing. But they actually managed to mm-hmm. bring that together into a strategy as a five-man unit that then won very conclusively. Whereas in red, yeah, we, we got that first bit still. We've seen that first bit a lot from them, but they then yeah. don't, they were a bit too much like red, <laughs> you know? They were just like not yeah. really engaging the mid to late game stage of the brain. Um, and against and- red you know the, as you say that is their that is their wheelhouse that is their comfort zone is the no brain mid late game we're just gonna <laughs> sit in mid and throw skill shots at each other until someone missteps and then we're gonna fight over it so <laughs> yeah, and it was just super weird too because the, the drafting for that red for the first time i feel like this this entire split has gone like full scaling late game composition against furia yeah and furia picking the early game is fine right you're just trying to run them over mm. the problem was they tried that without proper setup got set back and instead of just like, resetting and like grouping up again for another try they felt like they got scared in the mid game and then they mm. just kind of waiting and holding back and then every time like ZZK actually showed up to fight which is when you want to fight they just back off and then ZZK would go split push and the team would go oh we'll fight now it's like yeah. guys we, we cannot keep trying like this we actually have to make the proper plays work because they outscale us in every single way in every single lane there is no way we have any sort of late game and finally by the time like Fury started figuring out that okay, we need to fight our own ZZK. It's like, oh guys, it's too late. We're at 33 plus minutes at this point. Like, mm. yeah. we just don't win the team fight anymore because they've got triple scaling threats. So which is such an odd and very uncharacteristic from Fury as well. They're not normally like this. Mm-hmm. Like, usually if they want to brain empty, they just go at it hard, or they just like kind of sit back to IU and Tuts do something. It's like one or the other, not this combination, which ended up the worst possible way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely, it definitely felt like murky wars is like not actually committing, but also yeah. n- not having the proper composition to be doing any mid to late game anyway. Mm, yeah, this yeah. game in particular, gosh, the plays with ZZK getting those angles on the Urgod was like yeah. cool, man. absolutely out of its mind. Yeah. I think that was two times like in between three yeah. members. I think that's what who I was I him. watching? That's what I yeah, like him. I was watching. Um, and whoever was casting, I don't remember if it was you guys. It was, it was, it was, it was me. Uh, so. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it was um, FNB he nailed through like in the middle of a crowd. It was yeah. insane. Yeah. In the middle. And I was like, there's no way threading the needle like, the needle like yeah. that. That's insane. Yeah. And uh, I I don't know. I, as, as you say, like uncharacteristic from them. And the other game this week, uh, this past week was the Footy versus INTZ. Yeah. I think that composition to me, just fits the meta so much better at the moment yep. as uh, just a point and a bridge in the INTZ composition conversation that we were talking about. Mm. I would have preferred something more AP on the top side to try to have more of that presence, not <laughs> just rely on the Kaiser, which is why I think that Furia did much better. So they had the Jax with the Maokai, but insane engage the way that has so much range anyway, and a lot of that AP damage that's going to be very well executed because we know that Twitch is doing well on the way at the moment. Mm-hmm. And then Ayu and Jojo, the Zeri Lulu that hasn't shown up as much as myself and Trajan would have wanted, but it showed up and it did really, really well because it just works. Hyperscaler, works. Lulu, it's auto really attacks, good. boom. Yep, it's it's, really it's just so easy and <laughs> like no mental necessary this. to be like, doing the mathematics this. about it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, I feel like this game versus INTZ, they were just like more committed. This is the mm. game plan. This yeah. is how we do it. We protect this area. The Hui is just going to do wonders and Maokai does what Maokai yeah. does best, you know. <laughs> I I really, particularly still, I'm very happy with Tuts. I get more happy with Tuts every game. Um, I'm really, mm. he seems to have settled right back into the top echelon of mid lane, which is good. Um, because that's, that was yeah. my my point on this team was they need him to perform if this team's going to work and I'm glad that at the very least he is pulling his weight and that leaves the window open I think for this whole thing to come together and it's 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 very encouraging now we'll see them who do they have next week we need to get a handle on they have liberty and loud give me liberty or give me death apparently uh, <laughs> yeah uh, both <laughs> I think is is on the docket so they've got the Liberty game first, nice confidence booster, and then they've got Loud. And Loud is an interesting one because Loud is a team that will lose to a team that plays well. Like, Loud will lose the game if you show up with a good strategy and you don't fumble the bag and you have a good early game, which Fury absolutely does, and you can string it together into the, into the mid late game. They have lost two games already this split to teams being able to do that. So if Furia is man if if they're they're building to something here and they didn't just have a particularly good game against INTZ, there's a there's a very real chance for a 2 0, which would be the most interesting for sure. Cause then they're, you know, even or just behind loud pain INTZ, um, you know, VKS, like lose another game, they're not that far off and they're they're right up in the mix there, which is where I want them to be. So um that would be it wasn't the extra contender I necessarily expected this early. I think I had them predicted to get up into fourth or something by the end of the split, but like we're we're upping the timeline right now, which I'm here for. Yeah, I love how you said like they're just behind and then the list got longer and longer. <laughs> yeah, they're just behind them and them who's behind them, who's behind them, who's behind yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they just need to work on, you know, their macro, their micro, their learning, their mechanics. <laughs> not, not yet. That's, that's, no, no, that's our next Grab team. Me. That's our next team, RMC. That's. <laughs> That's Kaboom Esports that you're talking about yeah. now. Uh, because, you know, we can't oh, win on Lucian. We can't win on Ash. We can't win on Jinx. We can't win on nothing down in bot lane. And despite the advent of Scary, <laughs> I think they have the same problem, which is that they don't necessarily know when and what to do. Um, I think they are pretty directionless, like, as a team. Uh later on we got to see the house corky again that was cool he went two and oh or something nice <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> and from what i hear batau is going back down to the myers yes. of tier two and lonely is potentially returning mm. to yes active duty there's so many changes to a team in the single split we're, why, we're now swapping yeah. both of the top and jungle to try a new mix I guess. You know, as long as they don't swap cross hill up into jungle and CB Law and playing with no, that. Man. Um, nope, they're going to put him in support. I said it. I said it before we I, started. I'm down for it. I said it. We, we joked about it last split about yeah. playing the academy they're, roster. They're, at they're this all point. shuffling the top side every week. The bot lane mm -hmm. yeah. is the one losing every time for no good reason. <laughs> That's my problem. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what's going on anymore. I know like people were saying that, hey, it's an Atuno issue. Like, Seos is still MVP. I'm sorry, we can't keep saying that at this point. Like, <coughs> the is having a bad time, sure. <laughs> but Seos honestly has been disappointing. You were talking about new supports coming yeah. up, Trajan and so forth. Like, Seos, frankly, has been just struggling this split. And yeah. something's got to change that bot lane. I actually think what they did with Natuno against INTZ, put him on a hyper skill or AD carry, that's fine. Yeah. Right? Like he knows how to play that. We saw him play it against Ninja Kiwi. He didn't win the lane. That's not the Natuno that we'd like to see, mm -hmm. but he did win the team fights, which is the Natuno that Kaboom yeah. needs to see right now, whether they like it or not. Uh, and honestly, in both those games, I looked at Seos and I'm like, okay, Seos existed. Like he wasn't the greatest engage. I thought Scary was engaging harder and by default better since there was actual engage. I thought Batal was a better screen and playing defensively better than Seos mm -hmm. was. So I don't know what's going on in this Kaboom bot lane right now, but unironically, if you wanted to put Crossdale up for a weekend, I'd be down for it at this point. Give him a shot. Yeah. Let, him, let him have a crack at it. Let him try and manage a 2v2 with Natuno, man. It's tough, but give him a shot. He'll, he's yeah. a, he'll play Lulu. I know he will. I've seen it. I've seen Crash. He'll, he'll play, play anything Lulu. you want. Yeah. yeah. He will. Give him the seat, man. 
Yeah, <sighs> it's, it's not blending super well at the moment. I think especially these past Leona games have been just, well, there is the the two sides of the coin of like the Leona and Nautilus meta that we have at the moment. They go in, yeah, it's hard. sometimes they don't get out, right? Yep. <laughs> so I think I think Seos has been that side of the coin, just yeah. like not really getting the setup as, as needed or the team is not in a good place to really follow it up. So it just felt like every time the Leona goes in and Seos doesn't come out, well, but no my, kills my, come out of it either. Mm. My problem with Seos is he's not even going in. Like he, he, I, okay, I don't like the term KDA player, but looking at the way Seos plays, sometimes that word pops into my head. Like mm. he's not, he's using solo flare as a non-committal engage, which, hey, that's fine. But as a, as a Leona, if you're not getting right up there, like swimwear, like, I don't know. Like <laughs> you're not my Leona, you know, like give me damage. Like yeah. give me a damage Leona. That's, that's what yeah. I think needs. Give and that's why I think Leona. everybody was hitting the scary pipe. Cause yeah. with Maorang, Maorang is a smart player. And that means he's not going to go into hopeless situations. Mm -hmm. Scary will. Yes. And with this team right now, they just need somebody who's willing to pull the trigger and say, boys ready up we're going in yeah. and mm -hmm. when scary was going to do that i'm going to be honest some of the initial fights against intc looked a little bit sus with those engages but yeah. because scary just said we're going in and the whole yeah. team was like oh crap here we go like they, yeah. they went in and they're good enough that with their hands they should be able to get out the other side we're not seeing that with sales yeah. and in, in their game against loud i think that was where it like really hit home to me where <laughs> natuno sales ash leona both of you have engaged why the hell are we not going in <laughs> It's like the whole point. The whole lane is engaged. It's like the yeah. the the, yeah. The, the the concept here is that, like I remember because mm -hmm. I I saw I found out I didn't get to watch Kaboom and CZ live and I found out the result beforehand and I was like oh my god they won wow <laughs> scary pipe I was ready to hit it and then I yeah. started watching the game and I was like they win this game how do they win <laughs> this game this is this is just the same team we're just doing the same thing we're just like bumbling into silly fights and dying how do how do we turn this around again and then they just kind of like strung together some really good situations they and i think INTZ, bumble harder <laughs> yes and i think intz got a little tripping over their own feet got a little like mm -hmm. a little confused a little too respectful of a pretty behind scarner perhaps and like they they won and they had some good vi re engages right and that's like what that comp does so yeah. i don't know so we're, there's, we've, we've not solved Kaboom by any chance. I think let's get Karashiel in here. We'll see what Lonely does. We'll see how that's going to work out with Scary and Lonely. Maybe that's going to do something. I doubt it, but let's just see, I guess. So every week we're just like, wonder what Kaboom's going to do. No idea. So we'll see how they do. They've got I, Pain next week and then Loss. And then loss Los Grandes, now. Yeah. Possible chance against Los Grandes. <laughs> uh, we'll get to them in a second. Uh, does anyone feel strongly about Red? Because they won this game versus uh, Furia in, like, as we covered, just, like, Furia gave them a, a pretty big leg up, I think, and not having to try very hard um, and fix their own issues to win that game. And then they just kind of lost again. So I feel like we're still in the same spot with Red, personally. I feel like we've not... We're, 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 we're still on the journey. Um, and Nelson was like, my team only knows how to play late game, which was the most bonkers yep. thing i've ever seen being like red if there's one thing red canids know how to do it's play the late game i'm like no no i don't Incorrect. agree i'm sorry nelson i don't <laughs> think your team knows how to play the late game i think that no one does and your team's quite good at league <laughs> and they just okay, like so get there <laughs> so it's kind of funny because he, he made that comment about like oh my team only knows how to play the late game and i agree with you, after the i don't game, think red knows how to play the late no. game yeah. and it's funny because in singapore where nelson's from there's a saying called tangkuku it means wait long long literally translated yeah um, and something we say to people like when somebody says like something like kind of crazy or we don't yeah. believe it we're just like wait long long like, it's not it ain't gonna happen yeah and okay. literally like yeah literally for this composition it's wait long long i mean they, they want a late game comp i'll give them that yeah but did they know how to get there or execute? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they got there and we're just, we were better. <laughs> um, it was funny though. I, I saw some backlash on Twitter when Nelson tweeted that and people were like, so you say that y'all only know how to play a late game comp, but you decided to pick a mid game comp mm. against Pain? <laughs> mm. I, I mean, I, I don't know if Nelson's trolling at this point. I don't know what the idea yeah, is. Yeah, I think he um, was probably tongue in cheek somewhat. Yeah. He's a smart guy. He's a little like his coach. He knows what he's looking at. Um, and... <laughs> And like, yeah, I mean, the, the people who are like getting mad about that is like, yeah, man, 
being able to play more than one style definitely a bad idea definitely should never ever try to fix your problems yeah true very true thank you mm. thank you twitter <laughs> yeah, yeah, i, I sure. do think though that red this week showed that they understand their problems and yeah. they're trying to fix it yeah. i don't think they fixed it yeah we're, but mm. like i said we're in the journey still but i think there yeah. is a there is mm. a journey that they're on it really just depends how far and how fast they they go along that journey i think as to whether they stand yeah. up later so yeah I, I think the way i look at it i'm i'm kind of okay with what we saw this week like it's yeah. not great if you're a red fan yeah but yeah no we're not quite at the halfway mark yet yeah. so it's there's a like, plan I, it's the opposite it's of kaboom they're both two and four but i feel like red has a place to go and kaboom doesn't so <laughs> you know yeah um yeah yeah it kind of does yeah because we're, we're talking about these two teams one of them established with the roster they have at the moment and then mm. kaboom changing but that was scary mount yeah. rank you know like it's it's so unstable and yeah i i think i agree with you guys i'm, I'm still underwhelmed and disappointed with red so far yes. i yes. i don't think it's too late for them but it's definitely late in regards to well <laughs> so, now it's getting late. the end of week three they <laughs> yeah. have decided to actually start noticing what is the point yeah. of no return like oh okay maybe we need to do something yeah. now and start fixing our mistakes it just doesn't blend well with the team that gets playoffs every single time and has so much experience right it's just it doesn't doesn't feel good i'm not usually like uh a red fan i'm just like yeah red cool mm. they they do well but they're doing yeah below average they're doing below yeah. average overall understandings they're doing much below average than what we know that these players can do individually and together so that's that's where i'm sitting at the moment mm. still there's place for them to go but are they going to get there fast enough yeah I, you know what? i i think i'm so loud pilled at this point where i just remember <laughs> what was that split was it 2021 split two i think like where they were sitting at like fifth six for the longest time and barely qualified in mm. um, like part of me is just like yeah I, I can see red doing the exact same thing <laughs> yeah i i have yeah. been liking more what grevthar has been doing even on the yeah. games they lose it's not as bad mm -hmm. they've only won when he's played way which is kind of funny because it's like <laughs> not a grevthar champion in my mind but he's he's putting up good <laughs> games on it but like he's not He's he's improving. I believe from the start of the split, even on the end of last split to now, I think he is showing improvement. I think that is essential yeah. to Red having a chance here. Like the mid pool is getting stronger by the day, it feels, and like yeah. you've you've got to be able to stand up in that. So I think he is he is improving. So he won lane mm -hmm. this weekend. Yeah. Both, both games. It, it, one of them against Dinkedo, by the way. He actually yeah. came up with more. Sales, I think so. Dinkedo is in a yeah. slump right now. To be to yeah. as a side note, I think Dinkedo is not having a great start to this split. I think he's like incredibly mid right now. I indeed he is an incredible mid, uh, but I also think he just nice never left twenty twenty three. Somebody needs to get Dinkedo into the current split. Like yeah. we're still spamming Huey on on and, lockdown. And Ari, just Ari Azir. into you, you anything. mentioned it, right, Trajan? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. With the Azir pick, you you always think that that draft like that's an old draft. Both the teams, yeah. Red and Pain, yeah. drafted like old draft. Mm -hmm. Like guys, it's just it's the olden mm -hmm. days. Remember when it was just us in the final? Yeah. Remember, guys. <laughs> When we were the only two yeah. good teams, like no joke, when, when I saw that fifth right now for Dinkido, I was actually wondering if he was going to go with Tankers here, because that was what he was doing last split, right? Mm. To, to Leah, um, he mm -hmm. was going Tankers here. He didn't, but like, yeah, like I, I don't know what's going on with Dinkido a little bit. Like I feel his like Champel just didn't yeah. update with everybody else. Yeah, like mm -hmm. where's the Tristana? Where, where is the threat yeah. even for of sure. a Corky Tristana? You know, like a strong AD threat that is really good in the meta right now, like. I just feel like I'm never scared of him doing that right now, and no one else is. Yeah. Um, and that's just a hole. It's a hole in the map that doesn't need to be there. It doesn't because we know that Dinkedo can be like. He's still a good player. though. He's still, he's still good. Yeah. I believe that he is. Yeah. Like, he's just whether he's not being. I, I definitely couldn't play like the. You know the picks come from somewhere. Players, coaches, both. Who knows? We don't know. But like, we, we're just. I just. I just don't feel the the energy from him right now. He just seems a bit, a bit flat. When Wise is picking up again, Titan Curry is Titan mm -hmm. Curry. Like, love that. You know, Karaoke yeah. even had a bit more going on, like, than than in, in previous splits, mm -hmm. I think. So, I think Dinkel is just, he's just weirdly out of place and just, like, not quite up at the up at the level I'd expect him to be at right now. Um, right. Let's look at our lovely 0 and 6s before we talk about tier 2. Um, <laughs> oh, 
man. We're just running out of ways to say <laughs> that these guys the same don't know. Thing every can't week. buy a win, no matter what BRTT picks. He cannot buy a win, bro. Has he played every okay, bot later in the game Grandison. now? I think he probably has. I think he's probably played every AD carry, <laughs> and he just can't win. I don't know. To me, the Ezreal game, uh, more than anything else, tells me the problem is not BRTT at this point. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. BRTT's laning stats have actually been fine. And people are saying, oh, but he can't, like, it, it's him, you know, it's the way he can't, like, transition the leads that they're getting for him. Yeah, playing for that bot lane, fine. You want to say that? BRTT picked Ezreal. Yep. They didn't play for him. Cabby was out of lane yep. half the time, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's something else is going on with the rest of that Los Grandes squad. And you can say that, okay, maybe BRTT's presence, because he's such a veteran, they are playing. Very, uh, overly respectful of grandpa down there like you can't <laughs> say that anymore when he's playing Ezreal and you are making plays yeah. elsewhere it has nothing to do with him and they still couldn't string a thing together I don't know what's yeah. going on with them bro like do, do we have to put Cello back in for some reason just to, to start playing <laughs> like a team there. again he's ready yeah he's raring to I go I think that was I don't remember if it was that game uh, with Ezreal in particular but I think it might have been because it was Sejuani and Nautilus for season cabbie. It just mm. felt like when they wanted to go in, BRTT was just like, no, no, we're not going in. And BRTT wouldn't follow up and then Cavi or Seas would die. And you would be like, what happened with the communication in this team that they can't really decide what to do? Like there was this moment in particular, like I, I remember vividly, they both go in, BRTT looks, you can see like the character moves and then he go back to the mid lane to farm. <laughs> you know, like, like there's just nah. no synergy in this team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't want it. I, I don't know, man. So, I mean, we did get the super clever one v twelve in bot lane. <gasps> that, was that was insane. good. The one v two into yeah, another one v one into almost another one v one. The entire team oh, piling in to get him, yes. and the rest of Lost just standing at the other side of the map, just kind of going, "What are you doing down there?" Should we be doing something right now? I don't know. And he's like, I got this. Really? I got this. I was crying watching that. And he did it, it against insane. Loud of all teams, yeah. too. Like, it was what? Robo, Croc, and... I think it was Red... No, was it Tino? It was Red. I can't remember who the third person was, but... Like, yeah, it was like Robo and Croc just... to start with, and then someone else, and then someone else, like, to finally yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. put the final bullet in him yeah. after just... he took two or three with him, like... I was just crying, bro, watching that happen. Like, Dude. I remember casting mm -hmm. that, and like borderline tears thinking about like yo he, this kid's doing everything and yeah. literally like, we, we can't string together a win off of this like normally you break mm -hmm. a team with a play like this right not just yeah. their ankles you break their hearts robo would their minds, like robo the would break a that team with that play. like robo literally, does that to you yeah. you log off yeah. like that's what we see happen you know in the loud games as yeah. a pain fan Actually, every split i can point one play where robo does this and then like, and then they log off. Super yeah, clever. yeah like just what and it, it actually kind of looked good for Lascar. They were competitive that game. Yeah. But like they just they can't they still just can't lost. string together win. Still lost. Yeah. And even even the Rumble game too. Like Super Clubber still had uh, was it a 1v2 moment? Like he still had an amazing like plays, but mm. the, the second game was even more discombobulated. And I I don't know, man. Just you hopeless. Know, the feeling I get, yeah, yeah. I feel like the feeling I get is like because Super Clever is a top laner. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's usually that feeling of being more of a loner, like flipping our lanes and just getting side pushes, stuff like that. Super Clubber does that because of yeah. sheer, you know, like we say in Brazil, like fingers. You, know, mm -hmm. you just got the fingers yeah. to play yeah. it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the rest of the team is just like, how do we fit? How do we make a decision that can actually benefit from this? And it just feels like all the time, if Super Clapper is like doing a great play alone, when it comes to the rest of the team, there's there's nothing going on together, nothing. And because he's a top laner, it just feels like, oh, he's a top laner, he's doing his lonesome, he's in the island doing like what top laners do. But no, the guy's popping off. He was literally almost putting the entirety of loss on a backpack to carry that game alone. And still they couldn't do it. It's it's just so sad because the the guy is like a cinnamon bun. He's got like the softest <laughs> smile and he just goes for a 1v3 and just obliterates a team like they did. Like man. Yeah. It's it's yeah. sad. It's for, really sad. <laughs> first first blood percentage loss, 83%. That's 5 out of 6. Damn. 
win rate went ahead at 15 minutes, 0%. Because they never you win. You know what's funny, too? But, you know who's uh, getting the first bloods for that team? Uh, hmm. Is... Who is getting the first bloods for this team? Because the, the I mean, you've lane... got players like Super Clubber on that team, who's like 1v, 1v3. You've got Seize, who lost split, was amazing with, you know, uh, early, with pressure in the early game and ganking. Uh-huh. You have BRTT Cabby as a bot lane. Is first just... blood king? It's Envy. It's freaking Envy. He's got 83%. great KP as well. Oh, damn. Yeah, mm-hmm. but somehow it doesn't convert. Like, no. he's got great KP. He's got great first blood percent rate. If you ask me which player is most invisible on this team, it's mm. Envy and Seize right now. Mm. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. That was such yeah, a that's good, not a good sign. last split. It was such a strong core yeah. last split, and they've just evaporated. Mm-hmm. And like Envy as well as a guy who's played a different champ every game, we know he can play anything and then some. Like we know yeah. he's been like such a variable. And last split, he was such a reliable variable thing when they were going through the mages, through the Karma mid meta, into AD the Blanc meta, into all this stuff. Like he was right there playing what was needed to be done. It was so important for them. And he's still playing everything, but they're just not winning these games. It's mm-hmm. There's just so many individual points where I'm like, this is good, that's good, this is good, this is good. And then it just all rounds up in a loss at the end, every time. Um, so... Yeah. And what's, what's worrying to me is that I see shadows of last the time TZ in this roster right now, where mm. you kind of know what's... Well, do we... You kind of know what's wrong. You kind of, but you mm. can't quite pin it down into no. something actionable. It shouldn't mm-hmm. be making them lose every game. Like, they shouldn't lose every yeah. game yeah. to these problems. But they and do. <laughs> when you've got a problem like that, where you can't do anything actionable about it, where you can't seem to quite fix it, it gets worse and it weighs on your mind. And and it becomes like a mental block after a while, right? Like, mm-hmm. we literally saw that on TC where like, they finally won a game and we're all like, yeah! You know, because it literally it refreshed them. And after that, they looked much better when they finally found their first win. So for Los Grandes now, they're going deeper and deeper into a hole. And each week they don't find a win. It's not as simple as, oh, guys, we are the we are winless. We're the worst team in the league. It is literally like we are the worst and getting worse <laughs> is, is sort of the mindset that's going to mm-hmm. happen with this yeah. team at the rate they're going. So I, I very, very desperately need them to, to get a win to restore faith in themselves. Problem is, the only team I have confidence of them winning against, and not even confidence, I think they can win against, is Liberty. And guess when they play Liberty? When? It's the last damn oh, team of the first round, Robin. Dear. So week five, game day one. Like, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Well, we'll see if they get it together at some point, I suppose. Um, do we think Liberty's going to get it together? Oh, do we think Liberty we're going to swap? Academy lost their, uh, lost yeah. their streak, so they've sacrificed their week, so they should get yeah. one win this week, right? <laughs> Just swap them. Do the thing that Liberty did before, where you just swap the Academy team in for a bit. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe a quick dub. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I don't have anything new to say about Liberty. <laughs> like, they're just the same. Me neither. Like, we're just... I still, think pilots, I still think Pilot's pretty good. I don't think we're in a... Even in a Jin playable meta, we're not able to get Macau out of these games looking good. Um... No, and makes Senate, has though, been uh, for him. there's a risk of makes becoming slightly solved um and the meta also is not in a great spot for him to be fair like a meta mm-hmm. where tf top is just a, 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 a always good when makes is an excellent melee bruiser tank 1v1 er it's not a great time to be makes um for reasons somewhat no, out, out of his control <laughs> fully solved right now so i was looking at some liberty stats makes is leading in average deaths right now oh he's got the robo he's trying to make things happen yep he, <laughs> literally robo was number two makes is Jason, number one. Jason. <laughs> robo was number one like last week when we had stats that yep. we sadly didn't get a chance to present because of the how quick the, the stream was going but i was ready yep. to flag my here's robo once again top of the average deaths right where he wants to be you know yep and now makes overtook him uh and Shoot. with that darius game unfortunately where like you said he got solved and i think that's the biggest problem on this team when makes is struggling uh Mikau is doing less than 20 percent of the team's damage let's think about this for a second five players on a team on average everybody should be doing 20 percent. now of course that doesn't work because league of legends has carries mm. which role is supposed to carry 
AD carry. Most teams, highest damage share is going to be your bot lane. Yeah. Some teams, maybe your mid lane, one or two teams top lane. Teams with like Gigo on it, maybe, or Kiari might mm -hmm. go top lane as your highest. Pilot right now is the biggest carry on this team with 34.7% damage share. Yeah. So, Trajan, your gut instinct about Pilot still being good is right. He's frankly mm -hmm. the only thing that looks good on this roster right now. Yeah. That's tough, man. Yeah. Th that said, we know what's causing their problems. <laughs> yeah. uh, they know what's causing their problems. And mm. they already, from, from the get-go, the idea, they knew they could run to struggles with the strategy they were going to run, right? Yeah. Turtle and Melcy, they're really smart guys. I've said it before. If they were my coach and they told me, hey, this, this time we're going to try not screaming anybody and just practice internally for these reasons, I believe them. I try it. My big question, though, for them is because I expect them, I think they're comfortable just losing all the way if the split didn't change. But with the merger, I don't know now there's pressure yeah. for them to start winning games and whether they'll start screaming other teams. I actually asked this question on the Academy Coach stream. Yeah. Like, hey, is Liberty Academy losing this week? Because maybe Liberty is screaming against other teams and not their Academy roster, right? Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the case. I'm wondering if that's mm -hmm. what we're going to see this weekend. Yeah, there's yeah. certainly a lot of undue pressure being put on players and team staff i imagine especially yeah. right now when they're like well everything we do might feed into the fact that we might just get nuked from orbit um in two months so sheesh um okay let's talk about speaking of academy uh let's talk about tier two <laughs> let's talk about the america's challengers the new tier two tournament um i'm not sure exactly when this is going to be um we're september. going to global three september. split model and this is going to be in september i guess um yep and this will be top two teams from cb lol uh sorry southern conference or is it cb lol no, is it we're southern still conference academy, academy? okay so it's no, still cb academy. academy right so top two from cb lol academy top two from nacl uh and the top or one team, the top team from the LATAM North Regional League and LATAM South Regional League that I just learned existed today. So, I, I will eliminate you. First of all, all the regions have different academy systems or different tier two systems. Yeah. North America switched to what they call NACL now or the North American Ch Challengers <clears throat> League. There's two franchise teams that have like guaranteed spots. Yeah. Everybody else is open to promotion relegations and they have 10 teams yeah. total. Um, in Brazil, we've got CB Lowell Academy, which is the traditional sort of uh, franchise where the academy teams are kind of attached to a franchise team. But we expanded this year to 14 14, spots. yeah. Yeah. So we have four non-franchise teams, which qualified through a 128-team tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, or two 128-team two tournaments with the point system. Whoever yep. gets the most points, they're in. LA North and LA South. So LA used to be one region. And then yeah. Riot split them into Latam North and Latam South. And that half killed the region. And then they re-merged them back in because yeah. the two regions were suffering as a split region. They never merged the academies back together. Mm. So the academies, so weird. Latam's academy system is a single tournament rather than like a, or like one what? split of a league rather than two <laughs> leagues. Yep. And they do Latam North and Latam South. So that didn't get merged back in. Okay. So because mm -hmm. of that, they don't run like the full year system that North America and Brazil uh, use for the IT series. Right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so there will be two LATAM representatives, in short, one from North, one from South, two from Brazil, two from NA. So a 16 tournament, best of one group stage with points, I believe, um, into double a limb knockout bracket with the top four out of six. So fearless. most of, full fearless as well. So f most of the yeah. teams will get to play best ofs in full fearless, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm. I don't love having best of ones in a team with in a tournament with so few teams in it. I feel like we probably yep. could have done some sort of best of something from the whole start and made it work. Um, but it is mm. over the course of it looks like did it say seven days, five days? Is this just like over the course of a week that we're doing this? Yep. Yeah, Basically. it's a week. Yeah, it starts on mm -hmm. September fourteenth, right. ends on September twenty first. Twenty so. first. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Eight okay. Total. So one big event in Sao Paulo in Brazil in the arena which is cool we'll get to have some academy teams up on the stage especially for lla academy which i imagine have not seen the back of a stage in a while um 
So through, through no fault of their own again, to be clear. Um, yeah. <laughs> their, their region got snapped in half and then not put back together where the rest of it was. So I don't know. Yep. Um, Shame. But so they get to go and do that, which is cool. And we'll get to see talent from all over the place, which is nice. Um, and the, the academy systems, mm-hmm. given that the tier ones are going to have some region sharing, like import adjustment rules... I'm assuming the academies hmm. don't because they're not being merged in the same way tier one is. We don't know. I don't think any tier two mm. info has been announced for any of the regions. Yeah. What's the current right? like NACL rules for that? Well. What's the their current rules for imports? So like for import slots? For yeah, for imports of any I think, kind. I think they have the same rule of maximum two imports. Uh sure. but yeah, but I don't think most teams are yeah, teams Usually. generally don't use the import slot. Yeah, you've got to pay. You've got to importing for NACL is a bit like, okay, bro, like calm down. Like this is this is tier two. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like we had quad and quid, uh, or quad, sorry, uh, like import the split. Yeah, um, but like that's a very special and, and Romer for T1 challengers as well. Mm. Um, but that's because the main. Well, I mean, that was FlyQuest and Team Liquid, right? Yeah. They're actually using their academy team like you should be using them. More. Yeah. And you, know, you bring yeah. in talent, acclimatize them, and bring them up. And there were a lot of imports mm. that were like OST players, where you're like, when we say import, a lot of times people mean Eastern player, as in like LPL, LDL, LCK, Challengers, Korea player. And like, OST players are imports, but there's not a strong region. So it doesn't carry the same kind of we're importing to try and unnecessarily juice us up. Now, the, some of the best imports ALCS has had have been OST players, to be clear, like Fudge, for example. For OST but... specifically, it's different too, because OST got absorbed into North America initially. That's actually what killed yeah. the LCO. Yeah. Was that they were so they weren't US regional. So they status. weren't imports anymore? Did they get taken? So like OS yeah, players so are they, okay. They, they don't imports. take an import. Okay. Yeah, and then I think they've changed it now that OS players had to declare whether they were playing in the yeah. PCS or APEC region yeah. or US, and you get yeah one one chance to make that call. And now yeah. if you're coming in from That's the crazy. APEC region, you're an mm. import. If if you decided to be US or NA, then you're not an import. So that's yeah. why we, we've got quite a few like um, uh, OS players like uh, Surdy, mm. of course, the one who's like making yeah. who's quite famous right now one. is like the best yeah. top player Frank in, in LCS. Yeah. 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 Like he, he's not considered an import. He's yeah. domestic. So, uh, initial thoughts, Soph, on the America's Challengers, conceptually, um, format-wise, how are you feeling well, about it? Yeah. Conceptually, uh, there's nothing bad about having the two regions competing together. It's always going to help with understanding other strategies and trying to learn how to get even closer to potentially getting allocated as tier one. But for the actual format, I agree with you both. Like best of ones are not issue if they don't really get you anywhere in regards to seeding, in regards to understanding where the teams are sitting at the moment. And if it was at least a best of three, that would have been, I think best of threes would have been fine. Yeah. But I guess they were with a limited time schedule just for mm. the one week. So it makes sense. But yeah, it's. I, I would have liked to see more teams also being allocated, mm. like two, two, and two. I think it's a little too too little. I would have liked Especially to see a little bit more instead of similar ones. Like that's a not a lot of. Them, yeah, there's so much from <laughs> us. They have tried to establish a little bit more of an ACL this year, or at least tried at least from the from the people that make it happen. <laughs> I don't know how the actual riot. Um, yeah, because it's not idea, run by Riot, and, right? Like, like it's run focus. by focus. It's yeah, not anymore. Yeah. Okay, so that, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's rally cry. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um. So basically, overall, what I feel like is, it would have been better, in my opinion, to have m- even more teams to be participating, mm-hmm. to be actually getting these players and orgs sometimes, because I know that because of our franchise in in Brazil for CBLO Academy, we have the teams from CBLO. Big, making the majority of the 10 slots for the plus the four that we have allocated recently and then an acl doesn't have as much organization presence like actual established tier one orgs as much or does it did it get better i think this would have been a good moment for at least motivate them to be getting even more of that presence because you know more orgs means more money circulating and actually make keeping the esport alive so and especially the tier two scene in particular so i would have liked i don't know three let's see four 
yeah, like maybe 10 in the group stage. You could have done two groups, round robin, you know, stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. could have been interesting. Yeah, I agree. I think like three three from NA, three from Brazil, two from Latin North, two from Latin South would give us 10. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too is like, this is the last time we get this before we split to North and South America's mm -hmm. conference and now it gets Thanos snapped. So I'd have liked <laughs> to see a bigger event. Um, but I understand again, they, this is the first time this is even happening, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. they kind of have to keep it small. Uh, one thing to keep in mind too is some of these players are in school. Uh, in North America, one of the mm -hmm. NACL teams, mm -hmm. actually the second place NACL team from last split uh, was Maryville University. The entire roster yep. last split was in school. Um, I mean, we talked about Surdy, for example. Surdy is attending school too at St. Louis. So there's quite a few schools. And I think Winthrop, yeah, Winthrop's playing right now mm -hmm. in NACL. So if they were to make it, you have to keep in mind like they have to take time off school to go down to Brazil yeah. to actually play this. Yeah. Right? So I think that that might be one of the considerations they're doing as well, mm -hmm. timing wise, and trying to keep it small so it's more manageable. Yeah. Um, Fearless is going to be another interesting thing yep. because. Oh, well, yeah, I didn't even talk about it. <laughs> but CB Law Academy has switched to full Fearless. But I think we so won't see it till playoffs because no. regular season is best of one. Yeah, uh, and ACL is the only league that will be running full fearless from the get go. They just started last weekend. They are running full fearless. LATAM would not have seen full fearless at all. Their season's already over. Mm -hmm. So I mean, wow, they can practice against each other, I guess, but yeah. like mm -hmm. they don't have any stage games or like real comp games with full fearless format. And it does make a huge difference. Like your yeah. drop is completely different yeah. with full fearless because you're grabbing prio picks where you can. Like, and you can pick like the opponent's pri uh, prior picks. Like even if you can't play it well, you can just say that well, you don't get to play it at all for the rest of the series because mm -hmm. I got my hands on it, right? So, uh, yeah, it just changes everything up. Experience really does matter uh, with this drafting format, and I'm actually yeah. very curious to see how fast teams will kind of grab onto it and what sort of metas end up developing. Like how mm -hmm. coaches, like what what's the priority? Grabbing our own, taking theirs, and stuff yeah. like that, or maybe full cheese in compositions because I think. <laughs> Yeah. something CB Law could potentially yeah. do. We've got a lot of one tricks, a lot of monos here. Yeah, we do. I, I think the meta is in a good spot for this kind of format. Like we said at the start, like there's a lot of mm -hmm. viable picks in a lot of lanes. And I think that is the time to do Fearless is when you have lots of things yep. that are playable. So you don't have what people would always, you know, in a word, cry about when people mention Fear Fearless before, which is, ah, oh, by game five, everyone's just playing bad champions and the game's are low quality. And you're like, well, it doesn't have to be that way. Like... It's one, I don't believe it would ever be that way where the games would actually become so bad yeah. they're unwatchable or something. I think if you actually think that yeah, way, silly. you need to calm down. It's a video game that you're watching for free. But like, like you know, <laughs> so I think that the meta, even so, I don't think it would be a problem anyway. But right now, I think it's a particularly good time for it. So I hope that it's still in that spot. Obviously, this is in September and we're currently in June. So like... There's all sorts of things that could happen by then, yeah. but uh, I hope that it will. And I wonder. Oh, Aurora is going to be there. Yeah, we're going to have. Champion. We'll have. We'll, Ooh, hopefully, we'll have Aurora, yeah. the new champion, as well. Yeah, um, which does look. I mean, certainly interesting for to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. We can say this much, but I think the champion does look quite interesting. Um, and I like the 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 emphasis on like uh, maneuverability and uh, like dodging basically, while having fairly simple damage abilities and being billed as a mage. So generally, I imagine mm -hmm. being quite squishy, but probably the kind of mage that gets Nashes, right? If you're trying to, like, stick near them and dodge and dive around them, like, you can potentially go for, like, a more, um, like, a DPS long-term fight kind of vibe, especially with the ultimate where you're trying to, like, mm -hmm. trap them in an arena for a long time and dash around them. So I think it's a cool idea, for sure. Um, and... Yes, we'll see if, if Fearless manages to bring us out a good competition here. So, the the only other thing on this is, you mentioned, RMC, that like this is the last year before the region gets boomed and remade for like uh, LLA and stuff. So, I wonder, you know, if they do this next year, assumedly, because this that's where going, there's actually going to be the Americas region. It's going to be next year, and this is America's Challengers. So, yeah. well, you know, do we just take one more from, from North and South Conference? And we just do three now, three North, three South? Like, that might be a way to get us some more. And, like, what does the Tier 2 for those conferences look like? Is it the same? Is it different? Do they get more? Do they get less? Do they even bother trying to link them up and make them the same? Because I think, like, you know, the Valorant Brazil Tier 2 scene is a bit of a problem child for them. 
So like, but they were willing to do different systems in different places, I guess is my point. And the fact that didn't work, maybe that will make them not do that anymore. Though I think they have also yeah. probably seen that trying to homogenize everything everywhere doesn't work either. And they ended up breaking that when they were trying to do everyone's 10 and 10 franchise top to bottom like for a while and they just gave up on that. So I don't know, there's a lot of questions there, but I hope they then just extend the number of teams in it next year, basically. Try it now. Hopefully they have a great time. They'll be on Sao Paulo. The, the arena's going to be electric. It always is. And yep. hopefully they will then be like, let's do that, but with more people. Cool. Sorry. So. Yay! Yeah, I <laughs> think that'd be, that would be the dream, right? The big question yeah. right now is just what happens to Tier 2 with the merger. Uh, yeah. Until that mm -hmm. gets sorted. Mm -hmm. Like, that actually affects a lot of things, not just the America's tournament. Uh, yeah. Tier 2 America's tournaments. That could that will affect the Tier 1s yeah. as well. For sure. So, yeah, that's the the huge million dollar question, literally in this case. And, you know, Seventy five thousand oh, yeah. dollar question, to be exact. That's the question. <laughs> there you go. Um, yes. So <laughs> we shall see on that one. So I guess watch the space, and when there's more to to hear about, then we'll talk about it. Um, let's yep. do some community questions to wrap up here. Okay. We'll probably skip the we week shall. four preview because we've already kind of done it, and also we're running long because it's a podcast yeah. with me and RMC on it, so it's always going to run long. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Soph, you, Soph, Soph is an efficient podcast guest, and when Soph and yep. I do it, we actually go to time and we don't waffle as much because really? we're actually efficient okay. with words. So, and to be clear, no, this is a this is a positive view. So, we're not doing a good job right Yay. now. Actually, like, so um, okay, let's look at some of these questions. So, we have some from Lunar Day. Uh, which team not in the CBL do you think has a shot? Slash, do you want to see in Tier One next year? I guess for the guest slot that will be coming in and then he offers mm -hmm. us the chance to build an academy roster that we would trust in his words with the guest slot so first from the academy side rmc you're probably best positioned so you have the widest knowledge of these which of these teams do you think we're likely to see in that slot next year assuming that some of them maybe get nuked when the system changes or like their main okay. cbl team gets nuked and then the academy goes and all this stuff so Assuming that like you can just grab a team wholesale because these, a lot of these are yeah. franchise teams, right? Yeah, we'll do um, wholesale first. Yeah, just like five players. Yeah, then yeah. I think the two teams which are most likely is probably Pain Gaming Academy and BKS Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. Pain Gaming Academy, they're just one last split. They're currently leading in the regular season. Mm -hmm. um, they look generally pretty solid. I mean, Yups is from that roster, right? Yeah. Um, and Yups wasn't even the primary carry on that roster. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Pain Academy has quite a few people ready to move up. Uh, Kate Stars Academy would be the other one because I think two things. First of all, even prior to Coach Seal, uh, oh, actually, no, Coach Seal, he already made the Academy roster with a lot of talent. Like He, he managed to acquire Mordius and Telus, which is probably mm -hmm. the most the best bot lanes. I don't know if they're number one right now, mm. um, but generally speaking, they have been one of the top bot lanes. They have an import on that academy roster. They imported Kisei from LCO. Oh, there we go. Like, from like and actually into academy. It's not like the lonely import yeah. where lonely got imported to Kaboom and then got dropped to academy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Kisei yeah, was like, uh -huh. flat out just acquired for that. Um, they have Tyrion, who's like one of the probably two best top laners right now um, mm -hmm. in the academy. So, yeah, I think Kater's academy, Pain Academy, would be the two. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are if we are allowed to pick like the franchise roster, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I mean that is sounds Tukwil fine. The VKS Academy. Yeah, pardon. Is uh, Tukwil still on the VKS Academy roster? No, he's on uh, IDL. Well, he's on loan to yeah. IDL, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. think well, he's, he's on loan. Okay, I think yeah. I think he is. I, I, we think he's on loan <laughs> to 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 <laughs> Um, I don't think yeah. they would have okay. sold him that quick because like he he, they, he was benched mm. for for health reasons and i think they just wanted him an opportunity so to I, to like play again I and get settled back in i remember seeing something in i think like a month ago about how takui might actually have joined idl mm. um so because of that i'm not a hundred percent sure on i'm sure they could buy him out right like once they've from from the loan position they could probably further that transaction if that's the way it went it might have just been done outright yeah but it could have just progressed to the point where like yeah we love playing with this guy he's obviously cracked like he was cracked in cb um well, so I like found, well let's just let's I just lock this guy down um i posted the tweet um into discord but yeah he he actually left vks oh there we go shoot oh okay yeah, sorry well there he is okay fair oh, enough oh yeah there you go yeah, yeah. And I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I know. It felt like a fever dream. That's how I was like hesitating. Yeah, I was like, he... Did I actually see that tweet? 
Because <laughs> he gets to play with Shrimp, and, and Shrimp is someone who's played in, like, LCS, right? Like, Shrimp is, like, perfectly comfortable in multilingual, I believe. Um, yeah, he so definitely is. So it's a really yeah. comfortable mid-jungle duo to put together, and both experienced, both, like, very highly skilled, and I imagine mm -hmm. they're probably having a blast, so... Um, okay, so if we put one of those through, um, to build a team, though, to build a, a super guest slot team, now, I probably, if I was going to do this, would be going through names that I recognize and think have seen play well in Tier 1, because I haven't watched a lot of Academy, combined with yep, who's generally, right. like, maybe top 4, top 6 in Academy right now, so they're at least lo loosely on form. Um, mm -hmm. So, I think I could I could probably do this without too much trouble, actually. Hedan in top lane, because he's better than Robo, as I said. Um... Two, two years ago, or two splits ago. Um, shrimp in jungle, because okay. Shrimp is, I think, just is, as I said, incredibly skilled, mechanically skilled, and he's been around for a long time. He's got that shiny energy, like he has seen a lot of League go past through the years. Um, I wouldn't okay. take Takui. I would take Annie in mid lane, and that's a heart bet. That's a homie bet. Wow. Um, okay. Annie, I know it's like not actually been that good <laughs> for a while because he's been on Loud Academy for a while. They have been mid to bad for like several splits. But Annie is a big part of the reason why I fell in love with this region when I started playing it from the Annie Netshoes Miners era when he was crafting comebacks on like Vex and Vigar that had no yeah. business existing in reality. Uh, and that was just, <laughs> it was quintessential CBLO content, and Annie was the center of that, and the miners were very much the center of that. So he holds a very special place to me, and That's I would fair. give him that slot, and he's got, I'll give him the best jungler, and he'll he'll be good again, guys, I, I swear. Um, in bot lane, um, so I was never that high on Flair when he was playing on Flamingo. He, he actually... There was a point where Flair and Bouncy, I think it was, were, were looking like they were going to be good on Flamengo, but it was maybe a bit too late. So I'll take mm -hmm. Mortius and I'll just use whatever reason CL did, just copy-paste that reasoning into my reasoning here. <laughs> I'll just assume he's done okay. his homework on that. Um, <laughs> and You're a good ball, yeah. I don't know if enough time has passed for me to pick Zai, or I would, uh, but I'll take Crastiel in support. Um, so I'll take okay. Mortius, Crastiel, Annie shrimp and uh he done that's my guest slot roster okay yeah i can see that mm -hmm. if we're good about you're, it you're a real one for big daddy let's go let's go <laughs> <laughs> i got you bro i think i'm on the also just looking at names mm -hmm. and trying to be like this sounds like a like a player I used to know played well because I don't <laughs> I know <laughs> keep you. up with a lot of academy either. Yeah, yeah basically. Um, uh, I don't know, man. That's a lot of. It's a lot of teams. It's a lot of players old. in this, yeah. in this yeah, academy right now. Yeah, a lot of teams. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 14, 14 teams, seventy players, right? Ugh, and that's like not, not even including subs. And there's a couple of subs that have been bouncing around, you know. Subs, yeah. Yeah. Lonely and Batal yeah. both currently listed here. <laughs> True. Yeah, saying. you can pick so, either yeah. of those. Hey, Sting, you can pick Scary too. Listed I mean. here. Scary as well. Yeah. yeah. Man. Damn. Yeah, you could take Sting. Mm -hmm. The Sting in jungle is not bad at all. Tati for Pain Academy. Goot still kicking yeah. about from the Furia. Oh. From Actually, the Furia we're talking place. about Sting. Sting originally wasn't on any of these rosters. Him Boom. and uh, Linkus That's... came out of nowhere this split. Like they, the original. Huh. Jungler and mid was supposed to be Anato and Alone. I don't know what happened to them this week. They just vanished. So if anybody uh, knows, please do let me know why yeah, Anato and Alone Call the tip line and tell us alone. where they went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Have these, you players? Seen these <laughs> players on the side of the milk joke? Yeah. Uh, RMC, RMC, why don't you give us give us your okay. hot yeah, take do it, while do it. Sof pieces together? The names that okay. recognizes. I mean, I, I could cheat and just pick like you know, like the, the top of the, the best performance right now. Uh, but I'm actually going to try and craft the proper roster with uh -huh. some rookies because yeah. I fix Pain I Academy for us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be the cheap way to just take Pain Academy, the best team right now. Uh, actually, I don't think I'm. 
No, I will have a player from Pain Academy. Okay. So for my top lane, I want a rookie because I, I appreciate like straight mm -hmm. rookies instead yeah. of people who've had CBLL shots because SKB and Tyrion are both amazing and great right now, probably mm -hmm. the best top laners, but they've had CBLL experience, right? Mm -hmm. I want to go somebody new. I'm going with a guy called Jota Mize. Uh, this mm -hmm. guy's been incredibly impressive. This last weekend, he just pulled a 7K gold gap with the Gwen. So... With the Gwen, yeah, that's but, a classic right now. Yeah. We love the Gwen right here. We're we're loving yeah. the Gwen yeah, carries. We do. In this split. I'm sold. Maybe, maybe I'm kind of cheated. Uh, jungle, I'm thinking either Scary or Tatu from Pain Academy. Um, did, did did we count Scary? Actually, you know, no, I'll take Tatu because I want Scary's from Pain only Academy, just it, been but. posted up there. I think you can take Scary if you want, but um, yeah, sure. no, I've I'll, been I'll thinking of taking him to be fair. But like, <laughs> that's that's uh, fair. Yeah, yeah. I believe he'll get his spot. That's fine. I'll take Tatu. Uh, Tatu, very mechanical young player. Uh, he mm -hmm. can throw games though, so <laughs> he's a bit of a risky one. I'm taking on, but that's fine. I I enjoy a little bit on of a spicy in top side with a rookie yeah. and, and a, then I'm gonna and go like super artist. basic in the mid lane. Takui, man. Takui yeah. does not I belong mean, in academy. <laughs> fair enough. Let's yes, put, put a staple, <laughs> a solid pillar in the middle. Yeah. Call Takui. Yeah. Give him a zero every game. It's chill. Literally right now, he is hard carrying IDL. He has not lost a single lane, and if not Hell for him, yeah. IDL is dropping games left and right. Uh, so Jeez. I take Takui. Uh, AD carry. Oh man, I, if you asked me this last week, I'd say Mordius. Um, mm. There's two AD carries, like Mordius or Marvin. But this week, and I was actually quite surprised by by this player because last split he didn't stand out. But I thought this week in particular, he's really been carrying. I think he leads DPM for all AD carries right now. Mm. And he does it on different sorts of um, AD carries. Like he's not, he doesn't have to be like a lane dominant or, or like Jin, you know, like he's, he's not yeah. like a Trigo or a Ninja yeah. Kiwi, right? Like he's, he's more versatile than that. Um, Aikawa from Fury Academy. And I might regret this one, but I, recency bias makes me want to pick him for my AD carry. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, Fury yeah. uh, also Mortis is going to get called up by VKS anyway so he'll get a yeah. shot um, <laughs> support I gotta go with my boy cross the all man like, yeah. this guy yes. I I've said this for like splits and years now he does not deserve to be in the we're academy. gonna manifest his it. support play is clean yeah I, I take cross the all let's go yeah. okay, all right, okay. So I think I've, I've made my decision you got as it? well okay, okay. okay hit us with it yeah I got it yeah so we got I have already give explanations though don't, yeah. don't go okay. too okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's fine that's fine, fine. So, I would do, I'm doing SKB top lane. Okay. Mm. Scary jungle. To yeah, queer yeah. mid. Okay. Um, I'm going on the multi strain for the okay. bot lane. And I'm taking Zai as a bot. Okay. Respect, right? <laughs> so, so fill the CB law team. Like, genuinely yeah. a CB law team. <laughs> Let's go. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mortis is the only one without CB law experience. And you need to put uh, uh, Juliera in there, and then you're, then you're yeah. good to go. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I take Mordius over Julia every time. <laughs> yes, yeah, same. G over. Give me Cello, man, if we're I, going that way. Yes, where's where's Cello? Where's Kojima? Where have they gone? Okay, <laughs> they were just getting their acts together. Okay, so that's gonna be our our guest slot rosters. Um, <laughs> next question. Uh, this was a, so part one from Luna Day as well. What do you see as the biggest wow. change to Fluxu as to why they're having success right now? <laughs> Shinny. It's Shinny. Yeah. Shinny. Shinny. Yeah, the answer is Shinny. There you go. Thumbs up. Uh, it's Shinny. Uh, part two. Do Crack you think? Shinny. Do you think mm -hmm. it's sustainable for the second round robin through playoffs? Do we think they're going to keep winning? Mm. I mean, betting that anything is going to stay the same in Seabull is pretty foolish. But like, yeah, it's because I don't. It's not even like they're playing really well together, but they don't have the mechanical ceiling of other teams that are going to get their acts together and play better. Because I have a lot of faith in what I've seen out of Kiari and Fu in the solo lanes. I think they can hang mm -hmm. mechanically with the best. Mm -hmm. Shinny, I have no problem. He's a jungler as well. doesn't matter. Um, and he just plays in his <laughs> edge. He's chill. No one cares. And then the bot lane is an interesting one. Because I think the meta is in a good spot for Trigo. And it's possible yep. that Trigo could get dumped out into a bad spot at some point. Um, yeah. And, but, but like... As we said, the way they play shields them from that suffering. That they play around that fact very mm. well, around the fact that Shigo should yep. Trigo should not put in the situations, and you can just keep doing that. I don't believe the meta is going to shift to a point where Trigo is forced to honorable one v one Titan every game for a chance to win the finals. I don't think that's we're not going to do that, you know. So me neither. <laughs> Trigo's beat Titan before. He has. He has. Um, so I, I think that. I don't see any reason to doubt Fluxu right now. Like, mm -hmm. in terms yeah. of, like, success as well, I don't, they don't necessarily end first, 
but do they like yeah. drop out of top three or four? I don't think so. Not at this rate. I don't see yeah. any reason why they would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agree with Trajan hundred percent. I think it's sustainable. Uh, now, I don't. I think they will drop games, but mm. I think their style is really solid. Like, it, it's not. It's not like Liberty last split when they had the seven day win streak where all of us were like, they can't keep getting away with this. Like, yeah, that was like, insane. Looks who <laughs> legitimately can because they're not getting away with anything. This is nine to five job. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. doing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not like anybody's fault. They are doing a good yeah. job. It, I think it is sustainable. I think it's definitely sustainable to get them through two playoffs. Mm-hmm. I don't know how yeah. they were going to fare in playoffs because, yeah. you know, being best of three, that's a whole different situation. Um, but yeah, definitely sustainable. I still think they're going to drop. At some point, they're going to drop games. Yeah. There is no way they're not going to drop games that is not C below at all, mm-hmm. especially with the quality of teams that we have in the, in the region. And I think that whenever we get to playoffs it's going to be a different story yeah. but i still think that what they have right now will get them to a solid we know how to get at least to the first round of playoffs mm. and try to understand how we go from there yeah yeah i'm trying to think if any team has ever done like a a loss in this regular season i think one of the uh, i think the exodia intc roster might have but yeah like it, it is incredibly difficult like i i yeah. don't think we can do that in this day and age not even yeah like, Loud, like not no. playing hangover, no. I think, and go no. lost. No. Uh, which team is the first to beat Fluxu, and what do we think their record's gonna be and seeded to playoffs? So I, I, Ooh, I just okay. like, I feel like they're as just to throw a number out. I think they'll be like third going into playoffs with like a, like a thirteen and five kind of thing. Um, and that that's been enough mm. for almost first in the past. Um, with some splits, but I think it's gonna be close, and I think they'll have like a thirteen five, and they'll be third. Um, first team to beat them. I mean, they already just played VKS. It's a lot of games before that comes around again. Um, it would probably just be... It's probably just loud. It's probably just going to be loud to just, like, do some nonsense and make it work, honestly. That would be, like, the most CB law result for me. So, like, loud in second round, Robin. Ooh. Maybe. I actually have a wild take. Very hot okay. take. Very okay. hot take. So, next week... So, this weekend, we got... Uh, Flux to NTZ. I don't think that's going to be the game. But I think that... If red wakes up, the red fluxu game could be a red win. If they wake up, yeah, because I think because red. of like the style that fluxu has, I think red could just break it on yeah. the knees, like in the beginning of the game. If they can get that together, which we is, we, is what we usually love. There we mm-hmm. go. From red, just aggressive early game. Then I think that could be the first game. Yeah. Red's got that edge. Okay. I think there's just a little bit where, like, they could just take it. Um, I am going to have to speed us through these last few questions because I've realized it's it's very late for me. Uh, and I'm pretty sure my fiance is going to bed. So uh, oh, <laughs> we're going to have to skip through some of these. Uh, so do you think the failed loss experiment is the final nail in BRTT's career or pro? Or will it like the spark and he tries again next year or three shorter splits? I don't think so. I think he yeah. taps think- out after this split. Oh. If things keep going the way they go, I think this is the final nail. If things keep going the way they go, I I don't think he sticks around. I'm I talking like I'm talking like three and fifteen record, like disaster split, which is what we're on course for. If they turn mm-hmm. it around and they go like nine and nine or even like six and ten or six and whatever the other number would be, um, twelve, like mm-hmm. maybe. But I think if we keep going like this, I, I think it's. I don't think he does. Um. I think even if they maintain the level of underwhelming they have been doing so far, I still think that his pride is going to get him through mm. to next year. And I think he's going to be going to next year just because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to leave with a stain on his record mm-hmm. because he used to be such a staple. He doesn't want to come down like that. And I also think it's a very Brazilian trade, like really go to the lengths of actually trying for, for example, he, he started right now. He didn't start on the first split. So it's just half a year that he's playing. And mm-hmm. considering that, to, I would say that to him, it could feel, so for, for a player of his caliber experience and all of that, it would feel like too little time to actually show what is his level at the moment. So I think he would continue. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Um, I, I'm kind of agreeing with Soap. I don't think BRTT would just give up here. Mm-hmm. But... I fear it might be the nail in his coffin, not by his choice, but just because we're shrinking to six teams. Yeah. I don't see him yeah. getting a spot from those six factor. teams. Uh, I don't know who drops an yeah, carry for absolutely. him. Absolutely. Yeah. Titan, mm-hmm. Bruncey, Root, uh, Ayu, Smiley. Ninja Kiwi, and Mordius. 
Uh, yeah, like Smalley slash Morius, because yeah, yeah. Seattle already has One a replacement lined up. Yeah. He's not going to take and PRTT for this, especially not with the cost of PRTT. Yeah, and there's still that leaves Ninja yeah. Kiwi out in the cold, even you know. So yeah, um, um, I, yeah, I think well, it's yeah. it's tough to find a spot for him. Um, yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm just going to go through these questions. I'm going to ask one of you the question. You can give me your answer sure. and we'll just take turns uh, to go through this. Uh, which okay. team outside the top six, so that's Kaboom, Lost Liberty, and Red, is most likely to have a 2 0 week and why? Um, does, does anyone want to take this one? Because this is a tough one, I think. Does anyone feel super strongly about this? So, who do we think of the worst teams is most likely to have a 2 0 week just out of nowhere? Um, not not this coming weekend, right? Just any. Just, just, just any weekend? Just any week. Yeah. Oh, red. I think that's yeah, actually red. probably the obvious answer. Yeah, I think it is red. Uh, yeah. It's red because they've got the sauce, yeah. to be honest. Um, so, <laughs> They're spicy. Uh, okay, so thank you, Lunday, for those questions. Uh, sorry, I had to rush through some of them. Mickey, as well, offering some questions here. Um, what do you think about the CB Laws level in comparison to LCS? This is probably a good RMC question. Often we choke internationally. Do you agree with Revan's statement that Brazil top two can be competitive top four in LCS? Do you think this change will be positive? Remember, short and sweet answers, RMC. Let's wrap this one up. I, I, heard, I heard the question. I was like, this is not a minor a essay. Answer quickly. Wait, so <laughs> actually, no actually do we want to maybe say, because I'm looking at these questions. I think these are quite in-depth. We could save them. Mm-hmm and do them proper justice because i kind of don't want to skip over them and just like not do them properly Agree. okay well, why yeah, don't why don't yeah. i just throw a quick yes or no answer and we'll go into that next yeah. episode yeah so we'll just yeah. tee that yeah, off yeah, with the, next, the next one yeah. we do. uh do i think cb law uh, i i i don't think we're top four in lcs sure um, yeah okay. not top four i think yeah i think lcs has also actually gotten a pretty decent depth upgrade of the last couple of splits we have as well but so even with the eight yeah. teams thing, yeah, I think they've got some competitors there. Sure. I think we're top six, but... <laughs> Let's go, top half. Not even, technically, actually. Yeah. Uh, not bottom uh, two. I think, okay. I think luck can be <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> right, let, let's let's wrap it up there. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Soap Channel RMC, for sticking with me on this long one as well. Thank you, everyone, for listening. As always, please feel free to follow us at cblol underscore english on twitter and twitch at cblog english on tiktok and join a community discord where you can ask more questions like this and we will make time to answer them properly in the future i swear um <laughs> thank you everybody challenger it ain't our time <laughs> yes exactly and we'll yeah. see you all hopefully yeah. on our twitch channel on saturday and sunday regular time for cblol have a good rest of your day good night i'm going to bed <laughs> Bye bye <laughs>